I've been robbed. He went down that way. Young kid with a gun. This is Radio 227. I got a robbery that just occurred at the liquor store at 14th and L. The suspect is a white male, about 20, wearing a red plaid jacket, and he is armed. He ran into an alley in the 1400 block of L Street. Me and he went down that way. And request assistance. Take cover. A basic rule for survival against hostile fire. This officer advances warily, selecting possible cover as he moves. Now he is in position to return fire or pin down the suspect until help arrives, with minimum exposure to himself. Defensive firearms training, shooting for survival, normally follows basic instruction in single and double action revolver shooting. It stresses proper use of cover and the firing positions from behind it. One-on-one -on -one is a good method of defensive firearms instruction. The coach or instructor can correct stance or grip before the pupil continues. Improved scores from the kneeling weak hand position are immediate. The result of correcting the pupil's bent wrist and forearm are obvious and satisfying. Even good shooters may acquire bad habits when firing from behind barricades. Ready to fire from strong right hand side, the pupil benefits from another correction. Keeping elbow and knee safely behind cover, thus removing two targets from hostile fire. He fires a good pattern with a minimum of bodily exposure. Each firing range may set up its own course, but defensive firearms training objectives remain. Teaching the application of basic shooting techniques to confrontation situations. Failure to provide a firm base when shooting from cover makes for inaccurate shooting. Legs spread too wide to provide a tempting target for an assailant. Now the shooter can fire safely from a steady rest, putting all his shots in the kill zone and using the barricade for maximum cover. This is shooting for survival. This game warden owes his survival to knowing how ricochet shots may behave. The bouncing bullets that can kill a man even when he believes himself safe under cover. Behind this car, or this one. In this demonstration, the instructor aims at a clay pigeon well in front of the car. The rifled shotgun slug does not leave the roadway like a rubber ball at the same angle that it hit. It has ricocheted almost parallel to the ground to pierce the target under and behind the car. Safety lies only in putting a solid object like the wheel or engine of the car between you and your assailant. Let's review this surprising effect again. while a rubber ball thrown to the ground would bounce upward at the same angle. A bullet ricochets almost parallel to the hard surface struck. With targets at ground level, the instructor aims at the silver tape, a good deal closer than the balloons. Think of one of these balloons as your head, and you may change your evaluation of safe cover from ricochets. The 
The same principle maintains when a bullet ricochets from a hard vertical surface. The instructor has placed aiming points some distance from the balloon targets. Think of yourself taking cover around the corner, exposing yourself only minimally and momentarily. Would you be safe? Your assailant may even aim wide at the corner, as we see here. But the ricocheting bullets almost parallel to the wall could kill you as easily as they burst these balloons. The lessons taught by these demonstrations might someday save your life. Attention units 54 and 55. We have a 1090 at the Alexandria National Bank, 800 South Washington. First unit on the scene, do not enter the bank until the backup unit arrives. 10-4. This is Unit 54 responding. Many police departments now authorize shotguns to be carried in patrol cars. As a safety precaution, they usually have no shell in the chamber. Officers not yet fully trained in shotgun handling may forget to release the action so that they may charge the weapon. Sometimes this fumbling causes only a momentary delay, but in an unexpected confrontation, these seconds could be vital. Shotgun instruction, especially with newly issued weapons, must begin with thorough training in gun handling and loading. Releasing the action must become a reflex move, even under stress. Firing ranges and courses for shotgun training may vary. All houses would qualify the shooter in two basic positions. Off-hand aimed fire is best suited to longer ranges. Hip firing is used at close range where most confrontations do occur. The shooter must know the shot pattern of his weapon to be aware of the safety limits of various shotgun loads. Each year, the FBI Uniform Crime Reports tells the grim story of policemen killed. Some die from a rifleman's bullet fired from ambush. Some die at a closer range, often while performing routine duties. The largest number are killed by handguns at extremely close range, often before they can draw their own weapon. Close combat pistol courses meet this challenge by training shooters to fire at targets as close as three feet. They will, however, include firing positions used for fast, accurate shooting at slightly longer ranges, from 7 to 15 yards. The point shoulder position fired from a crouch uses the arm as a pointer, with the front sight as the tip. It should form a straight line from shoulder to front sight without bending elbow or wrist, which would deflect the shot. At somewhat closer ranges, the shooter may take the natural point. This does not use the front sight, but points the weapon like a finger.
Also fired from a crouch is the hip position. Here too, the weapon should be pointed at the target like your finger, but the bent arm at hip level makes this position more suitable to shorter ranges, where aim is not as much of a factor as speed. It is, however, on extremely short range training that the close combat pistol range should concentrate. Two ready gun positions should be taught. The first has the elbow resting on the hip, the weapon extended for fast pivot if necessary. This position could be used to search a room or to cover a partner at very close range. Another ready gun position is fired from the hip. This protects the shooter from the danger of being disarmed at close quarters. After close combat training, you should fire groups like this. Without it, the records show many instances of clean misses in close combat situations. And all too often, you get no second chance. To provide a practical and competitive exercise in close combat, the FBI firing ranges in Quantico, Virginia, have constructed a prototype dueling course. Okay, gentlemen, on the line, start walking. Okay, man on the left, two seconds flat. On the line, start walking. Right this time. 1.25. Start walk. The final firing position is 21 feet from the bladed targets. The dueling course is a useful training tool to simulate the fast reactions and proper shooting right. techniques you will need in a close combat situation. Effective use of cover may someday save your life on the street. Defensive firearms training can make such reaction automatic. Cover may not always protect you against ricochets, which have their own rules of behavior. Demonstrations like this convince you of the rules and how best to guard yourself against bouncing bullets. Many law enforcement agencies have authorized the use of shotguns. Defensive firearms training should start with thorough shotgun familiarization and range shooting. Statistics show a frightening increase in the number of law enforcement officers killed by handguns at extremely close range. To meet this challenge, defensive firearms training must stress the technical skills which can defend against this threat. Close combat courses which teach shooting for survival.